Welcome everybody to Bugbears and Brews. My name is Brian and today we're doing the epilogue of our Storm King Thunder campaign. Uh, so the way I've always done this in the past for campaigns is I kind of give the uh, like the 80s ending, uh, 80s movie endings where they kind of give a short summary of what everybody went on to post, uh, post campaign here. So I'm going to run through the characters, no particular order, uh, just kind of the order that I thought them up. Uh, some players did give me feedback on what the characters would do. I made minor adjustments to those, um, very minor though, for what they sent. So, starting off with Grimok, uh, Grimok grabs the or takes the bottle um, that contains Eleni and Thessalon, brings it over to Fizzle Tink over in Neverwinter, and says, "You know, hey, what can we do with this? Uh, you know, is it safe to smash? Is it what's going on?" And eventually, uh, through some deduction. It's determined that it's not safe to smash. Smashing it will just unleash Eleni and uh, Thessalon. And considering uh, what Eleni, you know, her powers and whatnot, it's not really safe to do that. So let's go ahead and hide it instead. Uh, so Grimak sets off on a mission and um, hides the bottle, which um, he goes and he takes it, fills it, or puts it in a chest, and then dumps the chest into a uh, into the sea. Uh, he then goes back to Nightstone and the Harpers and tells them, hey, this is what happened. He doesn't tell anybody where he hid the bottle, though. Um, just says, you know, this is what happened. The bottle's nowhere to be found, and so don't worry about it. From there, he takes the money he saved up over the campaign, which kind of surprised me, of more than 2,000 gold, uh, along with his portion of the goods that were left over in the bag of holding, uh, and then makes a small monastery within uh, Waterdeep. And that monastery eventually becomes a... Uh, recruitment front for the Harpers as well as a uh, sanctuary for traveling Harpers. I mean, if you know much about the Harpers, they're not really um, a big organization, so uh, having small sects here and there and people, you know, a safe place for them to travel seemed like a good thing to do for Grimok. Uh, Grimok, story-wise, I, I felt really bad that I couldn't bring in more information about the Harpers. Uh, part of that is mainly, they didn't, 5th edition doesn't give a lot of thought into the, um, what's it called, the organizations. They came out with the, you know, the base tie-in with that, but that was, they didn't give any more information of that. And so uh, at the start, I gave a little bit of tie-in with it, but eventually it fell off. And so part of it, it was, I was uh, Wizards of the Coast stuff not really providing, but I will say a larger part of it is on me and not just making stuff up there, so... Apologize on that, and I wish I would have done a little bit more with that. Uh, Rondi, he uh, returned to Fizzle Tink and uh, continued on with the crew of the Golden Goose, uh, and eventually became captain of it. So the Golden Goose is the uh, flying ship, airship, whatever you want to call it. Uh, eventually, um, Fizzle Tink gave him the option, uh, as the Golden Goose was being retired, uh, decommissioned, whatever you want to call it, and the new uh, rendition, which uh, was Genie in the Bottle, was being brought out. Fizzleton gave him the option of continuing on as captain as Genie in the Bottle or taking the Golden Goose and retiring. Uh, Rondi actually stayed on with uh, Fizzleton and uh, is now captain of Genie in the Bottle. And he now has his toes in a lot of little ventures since he's kind of a transport and rescue for all these adventuring parties here. So he's still constantly going out at his, you know, his adventures uh, via vicariously through the uh, transport and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff there. Varys. <clears throat> so Varys died in the combat uh, against, what's his name? Against Gastion, you remember he got uh, killed right off the bat there. Uh, in his time in the spirit world, he learned of the treachery Thessalon did in, about giving all the souls of his uh, former village to the incorrect deity. And so when he's eventually returned, you know, a couple days after the uh, cleanup, uh, he goes and tries to set out on trying to find the bottle, find Grimak, and find out what happened. Uh, eventually he does meet up with Grimak, and Grimak uh, refuses to tell him where the bottle is, uh, in fear of what kind of irrational uh, actions Varys might do, and eventually has to subdue Varys. Uh, but from there on out, he just leaves, you know, leaves everybody alone and tries to go out finding the bottle on his own. Uh, so, you know, whenever you hear stories about the bottle, you often hear stories about Varys trying to track it down. 
Pavic. Um, Pavic still denied any existence of a relationship or feelings for Moog or Junior. So he left uh, Nightstone pretty shortly after uh, after the end of the campaign there. Um, he went on through you know, all sorts of adventures, continuing traveling, grew older. Sadly, as Pavic grew older, he did not grow wiser at all and kept on constantly teaching these incorrect tenets of Torm. Uh, several decades later, he's in a uh, bar, you know, drunkenly telling these incorrect tenets of Torm uh, when there's another follow of Torm there that uh, gets really upset by these, uh, you know, incorrect teachings and uh, a fight breaks out, and the younger follow of Torm winds up striking Pavic down. Uh, afterward, the younger follower finds out that this is Pavic, and happens to be Pavic's father. The man who struck Pavic down was Junior. <clears throat> Junior, being a well-accomplished uh, priest of Torm, revived Pavic, uh, only to find that the battle left Pavic uh, a simpleton by the blows on his head uh, that were irreversible. So Pavic now lives the rest of his days being taken care of by, uh, not Junior, but by Mook, who is now the brains of the operation of their relationship. Sorry, Jose. It's just too fun not to do. Um, Anigo, uh, let's see here. Did I skip anybody so far? Let me recap here. Do, 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 do. No, I shouldn't have. I'm going through a list here. Uh, Anigo, uh, he took the job with Vander by, uh, you know, the, the job where he was going to act as a trade partner between the top world and the Underdark. Uh, but before going on his first mission back into the Underdark, he talked to Fizzle Tink and had a newer version, a better version of the uh, mnemonic tube uh, communication device set up. And he shared that with Broomy. Uh, and so uh, whenever he's, you know, from there he went on, uh, you know, many trade adventures. But whenever he's back in Nightstone, he always made sure to spend some time with Broomy. Uh, and he, and he uh, always talked to her about the books from the Shadowfell, would read to her from them. Uh, but he would always change the name to make sure she's not letting, you know, not knowing, if that makes sense. Uh, always change the name in the books so that way it's not talking about Broomy, it's talking about a different princess. Uh, that way she's not being compared to an alternate version of herself. Uh, eventually, though, as Broomy grows up, uh, Inigo does let Broomy know, hey, this is really about you, and, you know, just take that for her, and if you ever want to go back, let me know. Um, eventually, though, through that trade organization that uh, Inigo was able to set up, he mixes in with Bregan to Earth, which is the uh, male drow mercenary uh, in trade Merchantile Guild uh, in the Underdark, and used the, his connections there to get many renegade male drows out of the Underdark, and to also just cause major pains in the asses for any of the uh, female hierarchy whenever he can. So, um, yeah, that's that's for Anigo. For Gassian, the uh, man with the black tattoos, he spent several weeks uh, both with the elves and with the people of Nightstone, just kind of finding out the real story of what all happened there, trying to figure out himself. Uh, but eventually he left without any word to anybody, um, and not much has been heard from him since. However, whenever you hear rumors of a uh, fiendish or demonic cult uh, being put to an end or being ousted, there's often uh, a description of Gassian as the person that resolved it. Uh, he never sticks around, though, for any sort of reward or anything like that. Uh, Broomy. Broomy uh, had several terrifying minutes after the um, the spike was pulled from Gassian as the uh, scribe tried to attack her. But uh, eventually, when Elni dropped, the scribe just went completely passive and became normal again. Um, and so there was a little bit of a repair in the relationship they had to do there, but eventually that relationship was repaired. Um, and she grew up happily alongside as, acting as a scribe's daughter, uh, became fast friends with uh, Remy LaCroix, who was Vander's eventual stepchild. And uh, as, you know, visiting with Inigo and growing up, eventually Inigo and her took several incognito trips to the Shadowfell uh, just to kind of see what became of her homeland, but she never decided to stay. Uh, and she still, to this day, resides with Night, or resides in Nightstone, and it seems that her and Remy are actually heading towards marriage. It leads us to our last character, Thessalon. Uh, Thessalon, during his month, thanks to the feeble mind uh, of just sitting there like a drooling puppet, 
uh, was barraged with different plans from his trickster god and the great old one. Uh, and really the theme about those plans was really just to wait it out. There, there's things coming, uh, but there was definitely plans there. I don't want to let anything really out of the bag in case I ever plan on doing anything with this whole thing here. Uh, and eventually when he came to, him and Eleni kind of grew into this love-hate relationship where, you know, they had to deal with each other, but they hated each other, but they both had mutual respect for each other because they both served the trickster god, but they also have different ancient uh, patrons there. So uh, one serves the great old one, while one serves the fiend. So there's definitely some dislike animosity through there, but also through their patrons and their worship, they were able to actually outfit the bottle pretty nicely. Uh, so now they both just wait patiently for somebody to come along, find the bottle, and open it up, and they can act on their plans. And that's uh, the major characters I want to highlight over. I'm sure I'm missing people. I didn't go on with anything about Fizzle Tink because uh, Fizzle Tink's just one of my NPCs I like to use a lot, and he'll probably be in other campaigns. Uh, so I don't want to lock down a major storyline for Fizzle Tink there. Um, that's it. Like I said, I had a lot of fun with this campaign. Um, I really liked that you guys allowed me to go off book a lot. Uh, eventually, the whole second half of this campaign was off book. Um, it allowed me to practice some of my DM chops. You guys kept me on my toes a lot. I know we got really mucky and muddy towards uh, the two-third mark, probably three-quarter mark there, where we got into like the alternate timelines and whatnot. And I, I know we kind of ended abruptly as well. Um, but all in all, I think people, for the most part, uh, had a lot of fun, and I'm really looking forward to the next campaign. Um, still not quite sure what we're doing. Um, got a couple ideas. Uh, we are going to do a short stint on uh, the Adventures in Middle Earth. We're going to do a two or three session thing on that while I decide what we're doing and while the next campaign guide comes out and if I can get my hands on some other materials here. So... Glad it worked out. Uh, you know, Let me know what you guys think about your characters' stories as they went on. I, I think... Don and Mark are the only people that sent me uh, ideas of what they wanted to do. So everybody else I just kind of made up on the fly. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.